Hi, I'm Lucas Wills from 21S. And I'm Zach from 471X, and we're going to be talking about our Tipping Point Worlds robots. We designed these robots with the idea of being able to hold three mobile goals, score rings on the Alliance goals, score the three preload rings on the high goal, and to be able to have an eight motor drive. So the way we're able to have an eight motor drive is through our PTO system, which allows us to power our conveyor. And then pretty much everything else on the robot is fully pneumatic. So we have a, basically a six motor drive, and then we have this one motor that transfers between being a drive motor and being an intake motor. So it's running this 60 tooth gear, which is connected to this 36 tooth gear. And the 36 tooth gear can move back and forth between this drive gear in there, it's kind of hard to see, and this gear, which is chained to the intake. So essentially this piston just pulls on it back and forth and it's connected on both sides. So it kind of like pulls the piston together or it pulls itself together, moving the shaft. So this powers the conveyor, and the way it works, since it's a 60 tooth gear going to a 36 tooth gear, it's actually, at this point, is spinning at 1,000 RPM. So the way, and obviously, a 1,000 RPM intake is too fast. It's just going to ro rock your rings. It's not the issue they won't have enough torque, because we're effectively running or we are running a, a two motor intake, but it's just basically too fast to be accurate with rings. So we, we chain it from the PTO over to here on both sides, and then it's geared um, or chained one to two. So it's actually running at 500 RPM, which is, we found to be a pretty good speed. I mean, it was the closest enough we could reasonably get to 600. And Essentially, we we're, we run a, a vertical or nearly vertical conveyor in order to fit three mobile goals, which I'm going to go into in a bit. The vertical conveyor it was it was pretty good for what it was, and it's just like a regular conveyor. It's pretty effective at picking up rings on the ground. We didn't really have any issues with it being vertical. The harder part was getting it to at the top to like because we have to have a drastic change in angle in order to get the ring to be horizontal so that we can get it onto a mobile goal. And which is why we ran this um, like like a Mogo hood. And basically it just kind of has this chain here, which is connected to the intake. It sort of serves as like, it just helps it get deflected onto the pole effectively. In terms of our back mobile goals, we, the, the primary mechanism we used for interacting with them was this um, forklift. And what we do is we have a mobile goal, we drive into it, and then we pick it up and just falls on. And then if we look underneath, we have this little road spike, which gets caught under the black part of the mobile goal. Like, as you can see here, it gets caught like right here. And that was pretty, pretty good at keeping the mobile goal in. The way that our back fork is set up is in order to fit in size, it has to, it has, it's four pistons. So it has to rotate over center so that we can start further under the platform with this further down. And the way it works is like, if these pistons push at this point, it's going to pull this down, like the way the geometry works. So we actually use our high goal mech when, when that deploys to sort of push it over center. So then the pistons can sort of engage. And after that happens, this lock comes down, which stops it from going up too hard, far. For our tray, we actually ran zip ties that go up the back of it. And that was, we liked it better than having, you know, Lex on the, sh on the back, basically just because we didn't want to eat away the Lexan limit because we used Lexan for a lot of other things. And it actually served as a, another purpose, which was where, since we have a mobile go in the middle of our robot, um, we're not able to let go of it at the end of the match. So if we're contacting rings, we're kind of screwed, but the zip tie tray made it so like, the rings have to kind of get shoved in and then they have to be like stacked on top of each other for the for it actually to be contacting a scored ring and make all of our rings not count. So it was not really a big problem at Worlds. So the way we deploy our high goal mech 
is I have this like Lexan triangle with a shaft that goes through it. And then if you can see in here, there's a piston that pulls on that shaft. It's connected through this like two by one half cut and we threaded the shaft so we could mount it to the half cut. And it's pretty simple. It just kind of um, just pulls and is no longer holding. So then it allows this to come up and it pushes this out and allowing the pistons to engage. After that comes out, we're able to, you know, pick up mobile goals in the back and then we hold a third one in the fork. Okay, now Lucas is gonna tell you about our front mechanisms and the stuff that we use for goal rush. Our front mechanisms are held in by these bars here and by this standoff and this bar here. And when these pistons pull down, it releases the fork, allowing the fork to fall down. And that also pushes up this uh, tall goal aligner, which flips that out. So just like that, all of that flips out, including the goal covers. And then when we release the fork, everything falls down just like that. So this front fork is what we use for a goal rush. And basically the goal just slides in like this. And then these two bars here, these are our micro doinkers. And when the goal slides in, they just pop in just like that. And then this is basically impossible to get out. But to help a little bit more, we have this little plastic lip here that the edge of the goal slides over just like that. And that helps when the fork is up, making it even harder to pull out. Yeah, and that especially helps with so that the goal like doesn't get rotated out by getting pulled up like that. Yeah. So these are our goal covers. When we drive into the go into the goal, they just slide in like that. And something that a lot of people had a problem with with goal covers is they were just using a flat piece of plastic, and people's claws were able to just slide underneath them if they were low enough. So what we did to solve that problem is we actually have it bend down like this and the edge is rotated it up, it is bent up so that it can slide across the goal easily. But once it's over the goal like this, it's pretty much impossible for anyone's claw to get underneath this. And this worked flawlessly at Worlds. Uh, every time that we were challenged for a goal, they would grab onto it and their claw would just slide right off. One problem with these goal covers is that this is actually out of expansion limit with the back fork down. So in, a in order to be in expansion limit after goal rush, the hard stop on these goal covers is on a lever. And when this fork gets pulled back up, the lever hits this bar right here and it folds up just like this. It releases the hard stop. So the hard stops in like that. And then when it hits that, it gets pulled out and this can just come up. So after autonomous or after the goal rush, when the fork comes up, it just does that, and now we're in expansion limit. In order to further help with our goal rush, we have a kickstand that allows us to start further forward, closer to the middle goal, and we can see that right under here. It's sort of just a standard over center kickstand, except a problem with standard kickstands is the amount of time it takes for the robot to accelerate enough for it to be pushed down gets rid of the advantage that you get from starting further forward with the kickstand, and we solved that problem using an active kickstand. So we have a piston right here that actually pulls it down immediately. Once our code starts, you can see, just like that. And that gets rid of all of the time it takes the robot to uh, push it down on its own with a standard kickstand. And then on um, my robot, I used essentially the same thing, but I did it a little differently. So instead of using a string, I just connected a piston directly to the kickstand. And as you can see here, it just works like that. And Essentially, um, having a piston kickstand allowed us to like get have like a much more aggressive kickstand angle. So for our high goal, first, in order to score rings on the high goal, we have to align it. And that's done very easily using this plate, sort of plate right here. Uh, it doesn't, it usually doesn't align immediately, but as the robot shakes around, it'll sort of rotate into place against this plate, just like that. And that gets it properly rotated. So it's not like this, 
something like this or something. Yeah. It's always like this. So we have the right angle to score rings on top. It works better with an actual high goal just because it's like wobbling back and forth a lot more. And, but we don't have one to show you. So once we pick up the goal, we have this pull catcher here, which the pull slides into just like that and it locks in. So even if we have low air or something and the goal is sagging down, it's still in close enough of a spot that we can score rings on it. And our actual high ring release is pretty simple. We just have this piston here that pulls on the string and releases it just like that. Um, and we have this little uh, space around here, which blocks it so that this can't release prematurely. It only releases when the piston pulls down. Or high match rings, keep that in mind, folks. Six seconds left. There's some miscellaneous stuff we'll talk about, and the first of that is on my robot. I used a lot of Vex IQ chain, pretty much every piece of chain besides the conveyor and this piece of chain that goes from um, the shaft over here to the conveyor itself is Vex IQ chain because, and the only reason that and the conveyor aren't is because there's no Vex IQ treads that are legal and we couldn't get the exact right ratio we wanted here with Vex IQ chain. But we use IQ chain even on our drive. Um, we found it's a lot stronger than high strength chain, which you wouldn't expect, but you can like bend it at absurd angles without it cracking. Um, as well as the connection between the PTO and the conveyor is IQ chain. And then on Lucas's robot, there's some other miscellaneous stuff. So something that we have here on the 21S bot is we have this doinker for match play which is just for hooking onto goals and grabbing it. And this is something that came in extremely useful in qualification matches whenever we didn't have goal majority or whatever, uh, because we were just able to like drive up to our opponents and just like hook into any goal that they have. And it's surprisingly strong to the point where we were able to pull goals straight out of people's claws using it in some matches. I got word. That 21S tries to steal that red mobile goal from 9888C. They don't quite get it, but they are going to pull on that yellow neutral goal. 10 ton coming over, joining the fun. Now they head back to their own side to rack up. We also use a lot of dry lube on our robot. Something that a lot of people were coming up to us and asking about as on Worlds were, why is our gears white? Why is everything white? And that's because we just spammed Teflon lube on this. Teflon lube, dry, the dry Teflon lube is really good. Uh, we use it everywhere. It just works really good at reducing friction on gears and stuff without leaving like uh, greasy stuff behind. So when we designed these robots together, we didn't actually intend on being in the same division, but like, cause I mean, that was only a one out of 10 chance, but we actually ended up being in the same division and somehow we were able to alliance for eliminations and we made it to the quarterfinals where we fell off, but if we didn't, we would have liked to do good. Yeah. <laughs> so I think that pretty much covers it for these robots, but if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Thank you, and good luck in spin-up. Oh my goodness. Oh!